Hey there, my mid-year setup is finally here and I was ecstatic to be able to record part of it in such a magnificent place. I was on vacation with my family and for a while I was able to just enjoy the sounds of nature which you will also listen for some part of this setup. As you might already know, for the second part of the year I will be using the same notebook design, Playful Orca from Notebook Therapy. But this time it has white pages, which is bittersweet, because I loved experimenting on black paper, but I really missed using the wide range of mediums that the white can accommodate. So as you can see, I have my inks there, ready to do their magic along with my very much loved metallic watercolors. So for the mid year, I am adding less spreads than those I add at the start of the year. This time around, I didn't start with a cover, because I like it better when I have the year side by side with an illustration to go with it. To have a whole calendar here is something that I always have to have. Even when the first months are already gone, and you might know that I always enjoy doing all of the numbers by hand, especially when I am using fountain pens. I realize that I can have two line thicknesses just by turning the nib backwards, and so I really love that fountain pen hack. For the quote, I chose one that I have already used twice in my journals, but I just keep going back to it. In the waves of change, we find who we truly are. I just feel so in tune with these words, because life can throw some fast balls at us, and if the way we react or adapt uncovers who we are deep within, that makes us realize in which areas of life we need to work or improve at. And you can probably see that I sketched an octopus in this first illustration. And it's funny because I went on vacation with all my material for the setup, but with no idea of what my theme would be. I just knew that I wanted it to be ocean themed because of the notebook's cover. Then, as I was traveling and swimming in the sea, and then in the lagoon, it came to me. My octopus teacher which is a Netflix original documentary from 2020. And it is so far one of my favorites because it is a definite life changer. Watching that documentary during the stay at home season was so uplifting. I remembered being mesmerized by it. And not only because of discovering that octopuses are beyond smart and beautiful creatures, but also to see the way the behavior of this underrated animal helped this guy, Craig Foster. It's just deeply moving and motivating. In his own words, the octopus ignited his curiosity in a way that he had not experienced before. And I can say the same of his story. He mentions a lot of interesting facts about the octopus, but what I loved best were the lessons that he learned he acknowledged that she was teaching him to become sensitized to others, especially wild creatures, and that at a time when a shark ate one of the octopus's tentacles, although it took her some time and energy, her tentacle grew back, meaning that she got passed by that difficulty, and at the same time, Craig was doing the same in his own life. By the way, did you know that two-thirds of octopuses' cognition is out of their brains, but in their arms? Their entire being is thinking, feeling, and exploring. Add to that the fact that their 2,000 suckers are used independently, then that is like having 2,000 fingers, and that is mind-blowing. Especially when we are talking about a very fragile, liquid and soft animal that relies on tremendous intelligence and incredible creativity to survive. Now this is the part where I was able to capture all of the amazing sounds that surrounded me as I was painting. It was one of the most relaxing experiences of my life and I hope that you get to sense it as well.
Sadly, it was time to go back home to my studio where I had to finish the rest of the setup. But now that I have experienced painting outdoors, I will definitely make more room for it. It really was inspiring and wonderful. So I just did the index spread and this one will be the waiting for one, where I get to keep track of the things that I have ordered or that brands have sent to me so that I can contact the sellers if there is any delay or issue. This year I have been really watching my spending, so I don't need much space for this, because I am really trying to save money. And so far, so good. On the next spread, I will be adding the future log. If you know how the bullet journal method works, you know why this spread is important. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend reading the book or watching the video where I explain how I personally use this method. I never get tired of saying how much bullet journaling has helped me. And now that I have been doing it for almost four years, I have learned a lot more about what works best for my specific work schedule and lifestyle. The truth is our lives are always changing and adapting is a vital part of the process of learning, growing and reaching our goals. I find that the bullet journal, which is the most versatile organizational tool, will perfectly adapt to our own personal needs and also to the time we can allot for planning on it. Personally, I don't put a limit to the time I spend making of my journal a creative outlet. And I always like to emphasize the fact that you do not need to do this in your own journal. Drawing skills are not necessary. Even stickers or washi tape are not needed for the method to work for you. It is just an extra that is available for those who, like me, make of art an essential part of their life. And so something as personal as bullet journal has to have that personal touch, the one in which we love indulging in, just like we would with our favorite slice of cake. And that is why I share my art here on YouTube. The endless comments of how my videos help you relax and how you just enjoy watching my process are what motivate me further to keep on doing this. But of course, that is not what the method is about and I am always a bit sad to see some don't give the bullet journal a chance thinking it's not for them because of the art. Well, bottom line is, the method is for those who need to organize their life, their thoughts and ideas no matter what skills they have. So if that is your case, please give it a go. I am sure that you already have at home what you need, a notebook and a pen. And if you're here just to enjoy the art or to get some inspiration for your own spreads, you know that I really appreciate you and thank you for your time and appealing feedback. So I am just finishing the future log. Since the method is built one day or sometimes one week at a time, we need a place to schedule all future events and this is it. You would not need to add the current month, but like I have said before, I am always aiming for symmetry and completeness, so I really had to add the remaining half of this year and the first half of the next one, with all of their months. And here I try this new style of writing, which is a very small and space monoline and I think I love it. And I saw my sister do this sprinkling technique that is simpler than the one I did, so that has made my life easier. And now comes what I believe is my most favorite spread of this setup. Throwing all the octopuses was just fascinating, but this spread in particular is so full of color and whimsy that I fell in love with it. This is one of my basic spreads because it contains my morning and night routines which now include checklists of the supplements and daily rituals that I need to function properly. I do look into those pages on a daily basis so that I won't skip a thing and so far it has been really working. I always try to make the design super pretty so that I can start and end the days looking at something that I really, really like. I feel that just the contrast of the words morning and night give ample scope to be creative and draw according to those moods. My idea here is that the day octopus is just waking up, getting ready to tackle the day, 
and he is bright blue, which reflects the color and the vastness of the sea and the sky, symbolizing that there is no creative limit to what one can do on a single day to make it count. And then there is the night. On the documentary I mentioned before, it was fascinating to see that octopuses can change their color in seconds to camouflage themselves so that they are always changing depending on their surroundings. But when they sleep, they like turn the colors off and become mainly white. And yet, they have these sudden changes of tones as if they are dreaming. The guy from the video even wondered what they would dream about. Isn't that amazing? So of course, I drew a sleeping octopus with a muted color. Sleep seems to be a huge part of their lives. In the documentary, when the shark ate her tentacle, she retreated to her den to sleep for days, and that was vital for her recovery. I think that is a great reminder for those of us who sometimes take the importance of a good night's rest for granted and then have to pay the consequences. According to experts, during sleep, the body is working to support health brain function and maintain good physical health. Inadequate sleep over time can raise the risk for chronic disease. On the other hand, good sleep helps you get sick less often, maintain a healthy weight, lower the risk for serious health problems, reduce stress, improve your mood, think more clearly, and even get along better with people. So do your best to improve your sleep quality, because the benefits are well worth the effort. That beige stain that you see at the top of the right page is coffee, and it was the first time that I spilled it on my journal. I will fix it later, but it happens to us all. I am almost to the end of this setup. The last big spreads here are the when did I last one, where I get to keep track of the things that must take place repeatedly throughout the year. It does make life easier, because important things don't get overlooked, and they don't get repeated more often than necessary. The octopus here is jetting, which is such a cool thing they do. They basically use jet propulsion by sucking water into their muscles to force it out through a narrow siphon, which is a tube-like structure through which water flows. And by this means, they aim the water to steer in a particular direction. That is just one of the many ways they move around. I am also drawing here one that seems to mimic the human walk. It wraps its tentacles around its body, except for the two that it uses as legs and feet. It is just the most curious thing to see. I added a master list where I write down the main goals or projects that are due for the next six months, and I have also been using this to collect any fun projects or ideas that might pop into my mind. And finally, I am just adding the title to the final spread where I will be drawing the activities that I love doing most. It's like a ready-made plan for those days when we are free to do as we please. And this is also one of my most favorite spreads to put together. So you guessed it right, this one will have different octopuses performing my favorite things. And here is the final flip through of my myth gear setup. I am changing things a bit and so I won't add my social media panels at the end like before. I will be adding them on the Moldly setup along with some new trackers. So stay tuned for my upcoming July plan with me. I hope that you enjoy this octopus theme and if you haven't watched my octopus teacher, I hope that I awakened your curiosity and you go do it now. You know, I'm grateful for all the lovely words and support. And so as usual, thank you so much for watching.